I'm Phil Guyman. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years. Now I'm retired, but I still train as hard as I can to set the best times on the toughest climbs I can find and go on fun adventures on my bike all over the world. This is Worst Retirement Ever. That, my friends, is a sunrise. I'm not generally a morning person, but I uh, have to be today. Because I'm trying to do the longest ride I've ever done. Uh, I, it's, it's been hard to get training in this trip. We're in Florida now, still doing the family tour. And uh, it's hard to get training in this tour for this trip. So I decided, instead of driving from Orlando to Miami, where her mom is, I was going to do that bike ride. So the total distance for the route today is 220 miles. Now, I don't expect to make it that far. Um, the plan is, and, and I think the last sort of 50 or 60 miles of that are gonna be pretty urban and bad. You get to West Palm and a lot of lights and, and traffic and whatnot. Uh, but we'll see how far we can get. And then I'll time it. So Emily is still at the hotel in Orlando now. She's gonna visit with some friends. And then I'll just have her pick me up on her way south. This video is brought to you by Chamois Butter. Uh, that's for three reasons. One is they're, they've been my sponsor for all these videos, so all these videos are in a way brought to you by Chamois Butter, all my other sponsors. But number two is uh, for National Bike Month, they're giving away $1,000 to a bunch of different charities. Uh, they did a $1,000 donation to My No Get Hungry page. Uh, and then for the last one, you can submit your your request for you can nominate whatever charity you like so I'll put a link in the description for that but those are good folks and then the third reason that Shami Butter is uh, bringing this video to you is I slathered it all over myself because Florida is hot and humid I don't know if you're aware of that and I will be needing it for this ride that could be you know north of 12 hours depending on how much I fall apart I really don't remember what my longest ride was before. Uh, I know it's a lot shorter than this. I did a few like eight hour training rides for Everesting last year. So those will be up there for training. Distance wise, I did races that were like 150, 160 miles. I've never ridden more than eight and a half hours. So we will venture into uncharted territory at some point today. So this is what riding in Florida is like you got a big highway speed limit like 45 but they're going 60 and then a little shoulder bike lane thing I went to college here well I went to college in like north central Florida University of Florida it's in Gainesville it's a it's a good hour and a half from either coast by car so it's just real country but nice riding there are no hills so this whole ride this is where it makes it worst time ever like a normal ride in LA, 10 minutes in, I've got, gone up one hill and I've done 500 feet of climbing. The total ride today is around 400. That's how damn flat it is. It's so flat in Florida, it actually makes for good climbing training because there's no, there's no coasting. You're basically like kind of climbing all day. So you don't get the muscle tensions, but you do get the solid pedaling and endurance. You can go any cadence you want. Um, coming out of Florida when I lived up there, I would climb okay. I didn't know I was a climber for like three years. I thought I was a time trialist. I was racing crits all the time. But we started in Orlando. Orlando is a place that really shouldn't exist. Uh, it was almost invented by Walt Disney. It was like, you know, Disney was like, all right, we're gonna do Disney World. Where should we put it? We need a bunch of cheap land. Okay, that swamp there looks good. And then a whole, city came around it aside from this like highway shoulder thing my memory of florida was just a lot of strip malls uh in the first eight miles i had passed two chilies so what happens is you've got a little neighborhood and that neighborhood needs a lot of times what they would do is they build a public supermarket put a bunch of houses around it and then copy paste two miles the other way it's like a public centered economy down here 
what they would do. You know, and then there's the Publix. You need your TGI Fridays, you need your Panera, uh, Walmart. And then you go eight miles down the road and you need another one. And that's just kind of Florida all the way down. I don't, I don't know what technically qualifies as a swamp, but it feels like a swamp. I wore my, my short sleeve Starlight Apparel speed suit today. So this is, they have an aero jersey, but why not just go full speed suit? It has pockets in the back for my stuff. Um, I would estimate that the aero suit is worth 10, 15 minutes on a ride like this total. Uh, I do have a headwind, which of course, uh, it's not a horrible headwind. I'm still, I'm going 20, but it is definitely headwindy. So I just passed on my left is Central Florida Animal Preserve. Am I in Tiger King country right now? Uh, total feet climbing so far, 81 feet. I just, you guys know I love climbing. This is ridiculous. But what we have ahead is uh, what appears to be a bridge or it could be a mirage. All right, I'm heading up this tough climb. The, uh, that was the first time I'd shifted in a while. Honestly, like my DI2 could have died three hours ago and I wouldn't have noticed. I, uh, when I lived in Florida, I don't think I used my little ring for like the first, I remember feeling the moment I went to Georgia and did a road race and I was like grinding a big gear and the coach then Dan Larson was like you know that's what little rings for and I was like oh that's what that thing's there for here we go we're at the top of this epic climb thrilling descent coming up so I just stopped and filled my bottles at a, uh, in, in LA, we hang out, as you've seen on my channel, at uh, overpriced cafes. That's where we fill our bottles. In the South, where I'm from, my first few years, I didn't even drink coffee back then. Uh, your, your store stop was sitting on a curb at like a Stuckey's or a Pilot truck stop. So that was what I just did. There we go, there's some rain for you. See that? In Florida, it feels like taking a shower. It's just like a hot drizzle. Um, I can say it's refreshing, but it's not that bad. I did create this route and put it in my Wahoo. Uh, I named the route Florida Crazy. You know, not super creative, but uh, apt. As you can see that flag, the headwind has picked up. Uh, the drizzle continues. I'm not going to complain about that yet. But uh, you know, flat 200 watts. I was going 22. I'm now going 18. And that difference is going to add up. The way you pace anything, I've talked about pacing many times, is uh, I, I like to divide into thirds. So the first third, and this applies to like, you know, anything more than a three minute effort. So the first third, you're kind of controlling yourself to go easier than your legs want to. The second third, you're just thinking steady. And the last third is when it should start to suck. So that also applies here, we're in the steady portion. So we're now in a, like Okeechobee. Um, I'm still feeling okay. I did have a flat. I didn't film the flat because you know, I'm already chasing daylight if you look at the map of how long it's gonna take me to finish. Um, a lot of glass over in the shoulder here. Got a nice, I don't know what sliced the old tubeless, but uh, I did. So put the tube in. Of course, I only have one tube because I've been tubeless for so long, I got cocky. I know you can't bring CO2s on airplanes. So I did my, my flat change with the little Silka mini hand pump, which is a really nice pump, but that ensured I have a full body workout today. So upper body, some core, and uh, of course the legs. We're on 441 as a uh, made famous 
by Tom Petty. Uh, American Girl mentions 441. That was, he was up in Gainesville where I went to college. Tom Petty also helped mentions Ventura Boulevard where I live. So coast to coast Tom Petty action for me at this point. I don't know what to read into that. I'm bored. I miss hills. That's all. Now, of course, at uh, five hours and 40 minutes, I have completed the Cookie 100 challenge by now, which is only 100 minutes necessary. By the time I get to edit this video, uh, the Cookie 100 challenge might still be on another couple days. Have a look, that's a chance to get a uh, free Cookie Gator from me or the uh, sample cookie mix from Phil's Cookies, uh, invented by Phil's Fondo last year. Uh, if, if it is too late by the time you see this, then just buy a cookie subscription as a gift. A dollar from each goes to No Good Hungry, and it's delicious, so what's a better win-win than that? Uh, I don't know what's going on here. This is, uh, this is a lake, Lake Okeechobee, nice bike path parallels 441 over there, so we have a little canal. 441's on that side. I'm not, I can't stop today for for tourist attractions or whatnot, because I'm chasing daylight from sunrise. But uh, I will stop if I see an alligator. I promise you that. Alligators are, they're scary, unless you live in Florida, and then you're so used to them that you forget they should be scary. My, uh, I'd never like been around gators until I went to the University of Florida, mascot gators, and aptly named the uh, where I had to park in the, the freshman dorms. It's like parking area by a lake, a quarter mile away. I take my fixie over there, and the uh, the first day I got back, I went back to my car to go somewhere, probably Target to buy some school supply bullshit, but. Uh, I go to my car and there's just like an alligator about as long as my old Toyota Matrix. And uh, just look at it and I got in the passenger side and crawled over. And by the end of you know, by the end of my college career, I'm bunny hopping those bunny hopping those guys on the bike path. They don't move. Alligators are lazy as hell. Like I wouldn't go kick one, but their whole thing is like low metabolism and uh, low resting heart rate and like they move once a month to eat an egret. Their whoop scores will be through the roof. They, they give uh, my old dog Nala a run for her money for sure. We are still in a headwind, by the way, if that wasn't clear. This runner was run solid 16, 17 miles an hour. I don't see that changing. It's kind of getting worse. So I haven't talked about fueling yet. Uh, six hours and I've had six splits. I've just been doing a split top of the hour. I started with three bottles. I don't know how often I get to stop for water. I don't know what's going on out here. Uh, so I had three bottles of first endurance at the, the first stop. Uh, those were all just about empty. So I bought a Coca-Cola, a Gatorade, and a water, which is not ideal. First endurance is coming out with a little single use packet I'm looking forward to. But right now I gotta make some compromises. Uh, and Gatorade, big University of Florida invention, and me being in Gator country, will have to do. Um, no cramping, nothing so far. Eventually I will pay for substandard electrolytes. We've got a bridge. Let me see if I can remember how to shift. I think, there we go. There's a sign over there. Uh, manatees, which I forgot about. Manatees are a Florida staple for sure. Um, and it just reminded me of, I remember one time I was riding, I stopped at this lake or whatever, somewhere in North Central Florida, and you look down and there were manatees having sex. Now that's not, it's not that interesting or hard to, to comprehend. I just think of, you know, it's just like too fat. There's a lot of fat, all right, blubber put it that way, you can picture that. What would not occur to you, would not occur to you, is the sound. The, uh, what would haunt you is the moaning aspect of the manatee sex. So, 
just leave you with that for a minute. This headwind has uh, picked up. I'm in a hurricane situation. I'm going annoyingly slow at the moment. This is one of those times I, uh, I do wish I had my, my cookie Ostro. The, uh, when I made this trip, I hadn't planned this stupid ride. I thought I'd go for a KOM in Atlanta and then kind of just needed a soul ride. And anyway, so I brought the climbing bike, which is hilarious. <laughs> I, I'm going to estimate that the, the aero bike, like a TT bike, would be worth 10 minutes, an hour, or something like this. The aero bike, probably about the same as the, as the speed suit, probably around 20 minutes for the whole day. You know, but that's just less bike riding to enjoy. And I am out of water. Uh, there appears to be an intersection a couple miles for the, the Wahoo map. So hopefully that means intersection has a better chance at a, at a store of some sort. As I talk about the, the dividing it by three, we're now entering the part where it sucks. So by certain definitions, it's already sucked, but I should, you know, I'm gonna start feeling worse and worse soon, and that's okay. There we are, 12 miles an hour. 12 miles an hour. The intersection did not have a store. There was a police officer who didn't have water. The headwind is worse. I'm going 12 again. Uh, he said that there was a store across the bridge. I don't see a bridge, but he pointed this direction that I have to be going anyway. Not to get political, but that cop was a dick. I haven't seen a bridge. Uh all right, I'm Emily. I'm at a church right now because I found water. I haven't had anything to drink an hour and a half, um, but I found a spigot, so I'm alive. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is I'm going 10 miles an hour. At this rate, I don't get in until like, I think I miss our flight on Tuesday. Um, yeah. So okay. you got, I'm, I'm sharing my location. Can you just find me somewhere? <coughs> okay, I'm gonna keep chugging this stuff. Uh, and then I'll get back on the road. See you soon. Sure. Bye. Bye. So it has now come to this. Several women pizzas. A Coke and Superstar. Basically, I just needed as much salt as I could get. I realized what I did wrong, aside from this being just a bad idea, um, is I just needed one of these. All right, we're uh, we're in the car. Thank you for the rescue. No problem. Um, that's what she does. <laughs> she I rescues. Rescue. <laughs> Listen, if you flat somewhere on the side of the road, you just call Emily, and yeah, she'll but, show up. But save me some of your treats. So if you have like cookies with you or like. A slice of pizza. Yeah, and a bite of the pizza. Then so I have, I have another slice of the the 7-Eleven pizza. This is gonna be weird, but I'm glad I did the ride this ride today. Also, like I got, you know, it's fun to just empty the tank once in a while. I think that's healthy. Um, it's good to be outside your comfort zone. Like as as a racer, you know, specificity is the thing for training. So like, I would do a lot of six hour rides. That's about as long as our as a race would get. Um, I, I did a few seveners in the day, but like never went over eight. I, it would have been nice to go further today, but uh, various things against me. Once once you're dehydrated, once at that point it's a little bit too real to, to be like, I'm gonna push through and end up in the hospital. Um, so I'm gonna push through to a 7-Eleven and chug a bunch of Coke and Topo Chico's and, uh, and salty, really disgusting pizza to be honest. Like if this, on a, on a normal day, I wouldn't go anywhere. I have more self-respect than this, right? I'm, I mean, I'm gonna. Do, do, anyway, don't answer that. <laughs> All right, that's it from uh, the horribly flat, torturous Florida. See you next time. With hills, there's hills next time.